Hey folks, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 102. This is Twip. Hey there, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. Today's topic, or this week's topic, was negative space, as suggested by friend of the show, Mr. Blake Rudis, and a lot of good uh, negative space uh, shots came in. Troy Miller, did you get a did you get a look a good look at this week's crop? I did. I, I've got some favorites that I want to tweak on, and I think this was a great subject. So yeah, good, good pick. It was a good pick. It was a good pick. And as our member Stephen Sharp pointed out, we did do negative space uh, several weeks ago. But this, and as I pointed out to you, there is more negative space to be had. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a yes, lot of negative space to capture, and as evidenced by this critique by the crop uh, this week, they did a really good job. And just uh, just to remind folks. Folks, the so the um, format for these mixer, not the mixers, for these critiques is shifting a little bit. Instead of just going through them and giving feedback, we're going to go through them, and our editor du jour over there is going to be editing them uh, live on the fly. So instead of just saying, "Hey, it would look better if you had done X, Y, and Z," he's going to do <laughs> X, Y, and Z on a couple of these shots. Are you are you ready to? Are you going to edit in Photoshop or Capture One? What's uh, what's your tool of choice today? Uh, you know, I'm going to do actually all actually uh, Luminar oh. uh, Photoshop and uh, I'll capture one for some simple stuff. Yeah. Are you going to yeah. be replacing some skies? Are you going to see I some am, skies? I am. Like it's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> you don't I steal admit, my thunder. Like I... <laughs> <laughs> There's this one image. I'm like, I wonder if that'll work. And it, it's brilliant. So oh, it surprised me. I love it. I love it. All right. I can't wait to see. All right. So we got to dive in. Before we, before we do dive in, do you have any news or anything you want to share before we, uh, we, we jump into the pixels? You know, uh, F64 Live is coming up in September, so I'm starting to hammer down on all of my instructors. So if anybody's interested, September 12th and 13th in Santa Ana, yours truly will be there, and Frederick will hopefully be there. Yeah, I'll be uh, there. You can go to f64live.com and, and put your name on the list, and we'll keep you informed as we get more stuff. So, awesome. Yeah. And Always doing that. And on my side, my little bit of news is I, uh, I mentioned in the, in the member mixer, but I have been invited to speak for the first time at NAB, the National Association of Broadcasters Conference in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's happening April 17th through 21st. And I will be there speaking on not photography, but podcasting and community building. Hmm. Something I know. I, mm. yeah. I want to be there. I've, I've, I've written it down. I'm going to try to show up. <clears throat> yeah, you should absolutely show up. Come on out. All right. All right. So you ready? Let's dive in. Ready. Let's do it. All right, here we go. I'm going to share my screen, Twip Pro. Here we go. All right, here we go. We are in the photo critique area, and the first shot is from our friend Stephen Scharf. All right, let's bring that up full screen. Look at that. That's cool. Very cool. Art in progress. Art in progress. I know. I love that. So I'm, I'm thinking that those, you know, those uh, sort of the grid pattern that's on there is because, uh, you know, the artist drew it smaller mm -hmm. and now they're scaling it up. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This this is interesting. It's always interesting to see these shots that are of other art. Right. right. So it's the photographer interpreting someone else's work. And and this is a perfect example of it because and Steve is brilliant with this because he's he's got he captured the shot with that is of this graffiti wall or, or or art wall in progress. We see the ladder and the artist's feet in the upper third, right? So and it yep. makes it makes me want to see the sh it makes me want to see the full mural or whatever this is. Um, and it also it kind of a sneak peek into something that's in progress. It's going to be amazing when it's done. So even if even if Steven decided to go on from this and make a series where, OK, this is this was a point in time. And, you know, as the as the artist goes further into it, you know, we see the iterative completion of this. I think that'd right. be cool, too. Right. And then the, the compositional element of this, I love the fact that we see the art in the bottom left hand corner and we see just the feet in the top right. And there's so many stories in there. And compositionally, this is amazing because it's not split. It's not cut. 
uh, it's one unified story. So I, I mean, I don't have any, any way to improve this. I think Steven did an amazing job with this. All right. Well, cool. Well, thank you, Mr. Steven Scharf. So moving on to the next shot. I love how the community participates. This is this is great. Yeah. Twip Pro is getting better and better because we have such great members and and the members are getting better with their photography. You know, many were already amazing. And uh, we're just we're just seeing the evolution. Yeah, it's fun. It's really yeah. fun. And here's another shot from Laura Laura Patton. I love this shot. I do too. This is, this is definitely one of my favorites. And, you know, one of the, one of the things like right away that I looked at was, I, especially, you know, the negative space, I love all the negative space, but the dinghy is a little bit tilted to the left. And part of my brain says, oh, we need to fix that. Right. But that slightly off perfectly vertical. I think, you know, with the dinghy and being in the water and the bobbing, I think that it, I think that it works. And so, uh, instead of me saying, Hey, you should fix that. I'm saying, Hey, you should not fix that. Yeah. <laughs> I like <Yeah>. it. <laughs> I like it. I mean, you, you, it's just, it's really cool. Cause you, for me, you look at this, the white sky, you know, the you know, fog or whatever that is making the sky bright and then mm -hmm. the ripples and the, you know, it's, it's interesting. Cause you're like, how far out does, where's the horizon? It's way out there somewhere, probably obscured by the fog, but you don't know. So it just right. it looks like it stops right there, you know, at the buoy. Then the buoy's in there with its reflection and it, it's right at the perfect rule of third intersection. And it adds yep. a little splash of color to an otherwise monochromatic image. So, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Really and cool. this is one of the images that I wanted to play with. Um, oh, you want to jump into when this it? image? Yeah, yeah. So I, there were a lot of things that I looked at with this image and I thought, you know, let's just see what a sky replacement looks like. Okay. Um, so so here we are in Luminar 4. And what I always do when I do these, if you, if you have Luminar, this is this is amazing. I don't really know how to use a lot of the other tools in Luminar. Um, this is all I use it for. Uh, but I always duplicate the layer and I do that cause I may want to control the intensity. So we'll go down here. We're going to go grab a uh, sky replacement and I'm going to load a custom sky. These are the skies that come with it, but I have a bunch of my own skies. So I'll jump in there and I will grab, let's see, I'm looking over here on my left. I got a giant thumbnail view. So I grabbed a, an image. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, wow. S I know, right? Wow. Is that not amazing? <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. So that's that's uh, after, and that's before, and they're both good. That's the thing. They're both good. So like yep. with adding adding the sky to it at the top adds another literally another dimension. But turn it off. Let's see what it looks like with it off. See, with the sky off, it becomes much more uh, graphic. It's more, it's, it's much more right. graphical and, and, uh, I think that's the word I'm looking for more, um, God, what's the word I'm looking for? Just not artistic. Um, well, it's, 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 it's very simple. It's minimalistic. Minimalistic. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. So one of the things that I, that I do when I play with this in Luminar is once you, the reason I duplicate that layer is I go back to layers now and I can change the opacity. So what I would do is I, I wouldn't leave this at a hundred percent. What I would leave this at is maybe maybe 20 or 30%. Yeah. So, so there now it, it keeps a little bit <clears throat> here. I'll turn it off. So it just barely adds a little bit of detail. Just a little just, bit of a hint. Look at that. Yeah. That really just nice. barely, just barely. So, uh, there you go. Luminar four doing its job. I love that. That is so cool. See that look live, live on network TV, sky replacement <laughs> by Troy Miller. <laughs> yeah. Sure. We had to check with Renee to see if you've redeemed your, your sky replacement uh, skill. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the lighting isn't exactly right, but you know what? We're, we're okay you know, with that. She will measure and look at pixels <laughs> and luminosity on different pixels. Right. <laughs> Make sure it's right. That's why cool. I turn it down. That's why I use that opacity slider and I turn that way down, way uh, down. I love that. Yeah. Let me go. Let's take another look at that shot. That's really good. Very nice. Very yeah. Nice. That's right. Would you, would you, uh, Okay, now looking at this, there's reflections obviously in the water. Mm -hmm. Would you would you go in and and put some hints of those sort of purplish, you know, sky clouds in the water just to sell it a little bit more, or do you think it's fine well, like this? 
I think it's fine like this, and and Luminar actually does that. It it actually adds a little bit of tone in the rest of the image, um, and so it it, it helps. I, I think that when you're doing sky replacements, especially at this level, subtlety is what I'm going for. Yeah, so always. it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm I'm looking for just a little bit of texture in what would be otherwise a negative space or a blank space or paper white. And it's just it's just about giving us something for our brain to go. Oh, hey, look, there's clouds in the background, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all it is. It's, it's a little a little bit of uh, something to for for traction up there, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. yep. Love it. Love it. Yep. All right, let's move along. Very cool. Great shot, Laura. I love I love the shot though. We don't yeah, really need Laura to do anything to it. It's still wonderful. Yep. All right. Next shot is up from Mark Harris. Let's bring Mark up. When I first saw this shot, I thought this was a, a Joshua Sommerfeld shot. Oh, a rendering, <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, is that. she real? Is she real? That's not a real person right there. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua has ruined me now. I think all all figure studies are are three dimensional. Oh, uh, right, right. Three D renders. I I really like this image a lot. Um, I've always liked the the human form in sort of that black negative space. Mm -hmm. And to me, this really sells it really well. My only suggestion would be a little bit more dodging and burning, um, basically burning that right hand and what would be her left leg mm -hmm. coming across. It's I mean, just her shoulder. Tight. Her shoulder is a little bit hot, too, right? Yeah, you know, so so think of the light falling on her face and then it should gradually progress to the floor and then basically not exist, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you were lighting this in the studio, you would scrim the light or you would move the light source in a way that it would fall off more naturally. Um, and in this, I just think that it's a little bit more uh, bright and bold in the lower left areas of her body than it really needs to be. Yeah, yeah. I like these shots. These these kind of shots. I don't know what it is about about these simplistic, uh, minimalistic shots, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I gravitate towards these. I mean, because I see these and I think, yeah, that would look great in a gallery, you know, or great hanging on the wall. I'm not saying that other shots don't, but for some reason, the way my brain works, it likes simplicity. I think it's very cool. I think all of our brains like that <clears throat> at some point. I think the 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 way that our minds work and the way that we follow patterns and we the least amount of distractions, the better to help us understand the story. I think that that's just what these type of images do. Mm -hmm. And so working with negative space is such a powerful way to work. Uh, we don't need to fill the frame with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. You know, minimal minimalism is very, very powerful. Uh, did you did you try to put some clouds in this shot too, Troy Miller? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I did not. <laughs> that would be an insult to his image. I think. I think this is good just the way it is. You know, I bet. I bet at some point, um, uh, what is it? Skyloom will come up with a moon filter, <laughs> so that you can add a moon in any phase to any shot and have it look realistic. <laughs> You know, it's going to get there. I mean, like right now, Photoshop, you can go into liquefy and it grabs the eyes and the mouth and you can increase smiles and you can move the eyes back and forth. I yeah. mean, it, the jowl removal, all that. Right. Yeah. 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 At some point, it's going to be like, what do you want to add to this image? Well, I want to add a kangaroo and a full moon and a popsicle. And yeah. it's just, oh, yeah, here we go. Well, it's true. I, you remember <laughs> I did that interview with the with one of the, the scientists, the um the AI scientist at Skyloom. Yes. And remember, he said in the future, you'll just sit there <laughs> and describe your image and it'll spit something out that looks photorealistic that, you know, it built from what you described. Then you go in and edit it from there. So. Hey, if there's if there's any AI geniuses listening and, and has any photography things, we need an AI <clears throat> dam, a data asset management. There we you need go. to. Yes, we need to be able to just like what what photo uh, Apple does in photos. I can go in there and I can type in cat. I can find all my cats, mm -hmm. but we don't have that for our photo collection. Well, you, you have know. it on Google. Google does that. So if you're using Google Photos, Google is looking at every nuance of your images and you could say, yeah, I want to see all. I'm, and I'm not using Google Photos, so I'm guessing that this is exactly how it works. But I'm assuming you could say, yeah, show me all the images that I shot. You know, 
on Christmas of 2019 that include a Christmas tree, right? And theoretically, it should bring everything back. So it's yeah. kind of here already, but you know, kind it, of, it, but not on my computer. Like I want it with my working images. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of power to that. So you're just you're just needy, man. You just want everything. I'm very needy. <laughs> In so many ways. I love it. I love it. Hey, what's the alternative to not being needy? Uh, all right. So, Mark Harris, thank you for this shot. Very good, sir. Next shot is uh, next shot up is Armando Armando Brook. Look at this. See, they they're, they got it. The negative face is awesome. Yeah. I love this scene. He's hit me again with this with the simplicity. I love this. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. And and this was one that I actually thought about putting some clouds in, but it's it's there. The detail's already there. Mm -hmm. Um I, I I wish the foreground had slightly more detail in it just so you know what's going on. on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise it's just floating in space. So I'm I'm guessing that he processed it to to get that sort of contrasty measure in there and I love I love that. It just needs a foundation to sit on, right? That whatever that is. It's like a, I don't know. What do you call that? A platform? Yeah. I think it's some sort of, some sort of platform. I see those, I see those in the Bay area on, you know, in certain areas. Uh, I think it's just an observation deck. It looks like. Right. Yeah. I, I do. I do love this a lot. I just think that we need a little bit more detail in the lower part of it, but I love how the platform is on thirds. It's, mm -hmm you know, it's not dead center. We don't have a horizon. I mean, this is, to me, this is fine art and it's presented. It has a key line. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. It's I was, wonderful. I was waiting on that. You know, Blake Root has poo-pooed your key line, by the way. So. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get both of you guys on the show to, uh, to finally hash it out about key lines, borders, and watermarks. I think that, that needs to be a show. <laughs> And monochromatic, yeah. <laughs> and monochromatic, yeah. Oh, this is cool. I like. I also like that he left in or put in the or left in slash enhanced the reflection because you look at that reflection, right. it just looks like a smudge down there, but it's enough detail in it that you know that is an, it's a reflection that's attached to that to that three legged thing. So yeah, right. it kind of grounds it in there. Without that, it would. I think that thing would be floating, and we wouldn't know what's going on. We have no point of reference to where it really is supposed to contact or what's going on or what the surface is. Cause this could be without that, it could be sticking up above the clouds. Right. <laughs> so, right. Right. Uh, yeah, so, exactly. Cool. Good shot. Thank you, Armando. Dig it. Dig it. All right. Next shot up is from James Glenny. And this is one that you, uh, that you tweaked a little bit too, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one I want to, I want to play with a little bit. Yeah. All right. Let's bring it. Let's bring this up into capture one and then you can tell us what your thoughts are about this shot. Um, yeah, this is actually in Photoshop on this one. Oh, this is Photoshop. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for me with this image, I, I love the negative space. I love the composition. I like the story that he's telling, uh, you know, all of that. The thing that really distracted me was that lower left hand corner I felt was, was too bright. So what I did was, is I just burned it in. So there's our after, and there's our before. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the way that the way that you would do that in Command J, you can duplicate your layer. So now I've duplicate that layer is I'm going to use the clone tool <clears throat> and I'm going to go to mode and I'm going to change it to darken. And instead of just burning it down with the burn tool, which can change the color, it can make it gray, which I think this is what I did here. See, it kind of makes it a little bit gray. Yeah. Uh, the clone tool tends to keep the warmth and stuff in there. So basically what I did was I just selected from over here on the right and I just took my time and I just painted that in there just slowly, just kind of watching the edges just a little bit. We don't really need to do a whole lot, just enough to get rid of that, that light fall off. Mm -hmm. So just a bit, that's it. That's, that's really it. And so, you know, that's, the, it's keeping our focus on the cup even more because we don't need that light spill on the table. And then as I was playing with this, I thought, well, you know, when you flip an image, like whether an image has the subjects in the lower left or the lower right, it changes the the mood. So I, what I did is I flipped it just to kind of see how it feels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And put the weight on the other side. Yeah. I wonder if right. it matters it, if you're right or left-handed, whether you like or if you like that <laughs> on the right or left-hand side. 
I don't know, but you know what I what I do d- like to do is I like to do this if I'm working on an image competition image or I'm building a fine art piece is I flip the image because I want to see like ah, how does this make me feel, right? Like like we read the photos from the left to the right. So to me, I see the cup first, the negative space last. So this way, I see the negative space first and the cup last. Mm. So if this was an ad. What, what would what would the ad company want? You know, you you yeah. you worked in advertising, right? Like, do you mm-hmm. want your subject to be I think seen? I'd wanna, I, th- I think it depends on the layout. Like, if this was a double truck or a two a a, a two page spread, um, mm-hmm. and you're dividing it down the middle, I think I would. And someone turned the page to get to this. I think I'd probably want the cup on the right side, and the headline on the left side, kind of stretching into the right side a little bit, and then my copy mm-hmm. down the left you know, in sort of a a gray type or something, or maybe some complimentary color to the, to the blue. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, literally that's the, that's the difference. So, you know, just watch those highlight areas and then look at your images. If you can flip it, maybe you should flip it. Mm -hmm. And the way that the, an easy way, an easy way to flip it is, um, duplicate your layer with a command J and then do command T, which brings up your free transform tool, right click and just say flip horizontally. And boom. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Very simple. But Very simple. yeah, you can't do that on things with telltale signs, <laughs> like words no. or anything like that in there. You know, I've tried yeah. that once. One time I had the perfect shot, man. Of, uh, that I wanted. I, it was something on Twip. I wanted to use a, a shot of a camera in and it would have been perfect flipped. But of course, you know. The word Nikon and everything were reversed. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would have worked. Would have worked. But no, that's a good tip. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. there you go. All right. So let's move on to the next shot. I love this format, by the way. This is really cool doing this, doing the it's edits a lot of fun. to the images. Yeah. All right. Amy Brooks is up next, and Amy gives us this wonder. Look at that. Oh, I love the way the water cresting right in the rule of thirds right up in there. Look at that. That is so cool. Yeah. And there's a little bit. It looks like maybe a, a little bit of a rainbow uh, coming off the backside of that. Um, that little wave. Where? It's like, I, you know, I don't see a rainbow in there. That's, well, a, smudge. I, I said, That's a smudge maybe. on your wa- on your monitor. <laughs> <Get that. laughs> it's wishful thinking, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No, this is cool. I like this. Uh, again, very simplistic. Maybe maybe the thing that I, I gravitate towards is simple shots, very graphical elements, and the the pattern disruptor in the lower third yeah. <laughs> of the image, right? That seems to be the formula. I could not agree more. I mean, this is, you know, when I go out and play, just for me, when I go out and shoot, this is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. Uh-huh. You know, that, that single leaf, the single yellow leaf yeah. in a in a pile of, you know, red leaves or whatever, yes. right? Yeah, pattern yeah. interrupted. Yep. Yeah, the pattern yeah. interrupter. Yep. Vincent Versace, yep. the photographer, um, I went to a talk that he did many years ago, and that was the topic of the talk. It was disrupting patterns. You know, in photography and how and he went through a bunch of examples of how famous photographs have done that to great effect. And it is it's brilliant. You know, like you said, mm-hmm. a pile of leaves, one red leaf or a bunch of people with, you know, dressed monochromatically and one person in there with a red umbrella. You know, the, those kinds right, of things right. just like, oh, wow, stunning. That's great. Yep, exactly. No, I'm I'm a big I'm a big fan of that and I think that our brains tend to really appreciate that. You know, this is this isn't art rules that somebody made up over time and we said, "Oh yeah, you've got to follow these rules." Th- these are these are ways that our brains work. Yeah. You know, and across thousands of years, you look at art from the Chinese dynasties and Jap- Japan and um, you know, the Middle East all the way up through the Renaissance, like these are these are skills that artists have put into place for a long time. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, so. you're like you said, you're our brains are programmed to look for patterns and then look for interruptions in those patterns. And that's, that's right. I mean, that's how you, you know, Hey, here's a bush with a bunch of green berries and one bear, one red berry on it. Should I eat right. the one berry or stay away from it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. And you can set shots up too. I mean, you can, you can help them to work better for you. So like in, with this shot with Amy, like if there was a seagull sitting in the lower left corner, You'd have your primary hook and you have your secondary hook, but they're still very simple. And it's still the pattern interruption 
Um, but you've got sort of that second element that your brain goes, Hey, what is that? What is that little guy right there? Like, Oh, look, it's an otter or it's a seagull or. Yep. And a lot of times in our, in our images, in the images, um, especially the ones that we see in the critique, they're great, but there's a lot of elements in there, right? Sometimes it, it experiment with getting rid of elements. Like we talk about a lot, like even color, like experiment with getting rid of color, like color in like in this right. shot, for example, would this shot be more effective in a punchy black and white versus Ooh. showing the blue of the ocean in there? Or I the think lake? it would, but I didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was too obvious. <laughs> But it's true. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks, it's fine like this as well. But would it, you know, experiment? Would it have more impact if it was monochromatic? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Cool. Beautiful shot, Amy. Yeah. Yep. Not, a, not a lot I can add to that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very cool. All right. Next shot is from Joshua Sommerfeld. Let's take a look at this one. Look at that. That is cool. <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> he just has I, too much power. He should not have that much power to just create reality and whatever he feels like it. <laughs> you know what's funny is is I've been watching uh Star the Star Trek uh Discovery mm -hmm. and uh th there's the Klingons and it, at first when I saw this in a thumbnail I thought, oh my gosh, she's like a rendered a Klingon hand. You know, their hand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if Klingons are translucent purple, though. <laughs> so. I don't think so. No, but the the big claws and the fingers and things like that. No, yeah. the, the juxtaposition is amazing. And uh, kudos to Joshua for putting this together. I love it. Yeah. Is that is the is the human hand real? I wonder. I think it, it looks, is. It looks real. It is real. But it is but real. but that that is a kudos to to Joshua that I have to even ask that question. Right. right. That's got to be the 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 perfect compliment for someone who does rendering of people. You know, right. that if you if you have to look at it and ask the question, is it real or is it Memorex? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I, I love this. Uh, this is fantastic. I There needs to be like an ad slogan in here for something. Uh, it's it's very clever. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Yeah, reach out and touch someone. That's what it is. <laughs> reach out and touch something. <laughs> Good shot, Joshua. Thank you. Well, that was cre nice. creativity. It's so cool. Like I said, he should not have that much power to be able to create reality. He's like, no, oh, I know. I, I love his stuff. I love Joshua's stuff. Yep. All right. Craig Stanfley's up next. Uh oh. I'm liking this one already. Look at this. I know. You Talk know, about this superpowers. Is... Look at this superpower. Yeah, you know, this is a uh, for me. This is a lot less about negative space. I realize it can fit into that space, um, into that category. But for me, this is really about motion, mm -hmm. um, and just and just momentum and movement. And I love the fact that uh, Craig panned with the surfer, and he's the surfer's just crisp enough that he stands out, but yet the foreground and the waves are soft. Yeah. I, I'm, I want to go there. I'm convinced I want to go to this beach. He's shown so many photos of this beach and the waves and shots with models on there. Like, I have to go there. We do. We are. I think we all have to go there. I so. want these waves. I want these in my collection. I want to collect them. You'd have to have Stampley talent, too, to, to, <laughs> to, to capture the waves. He could help me. You know, you he, I'm, he could help me out. You're learnable. You're learnable. I'm learnable. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I, although this is in the morning, I know this is probably in the morning, which would be really, really tough for me. Yeah. Um, but I would do it. I would do it. Yeah, this is cool. I, I, I dig this shot a lot. Again, fine art can be hung on the wall. Big, thick, you know, wooden black frame around the edge with a little yep. tag, with a price tag on the wall. Lower left for, let's say, 45K, I think, you know. Well, you know, Peter Levshin's company and uh, my daughter, Kira, both work on the Surfer's Journal. And it's an amazing, uh, it's not, it's a journal, it's not a magazine. And they feature a lot of artists and they feature a lot of amazing work in there. And this is the, this is the quality of work that I would expect to see in, uh, uh, you know, a printed material like that. Love it. Love it. Yeah, it's very nice. Hey, right, Craig Stampley. Thank you, sir. All right. Next shot up is this guy from Michael DeRay, Negative Space Ducks. This is great. <laughs> this is just great. <laughs> I was like, how early did these people get there, right? Like, these people that... were serious. They were like, you know what? We're getting our spot. We sit there every year. 
last year somebody came and got our spot. We we're gonna get yeah. there early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got our cooler. Down. We're ready for the rain. You know, little Johnny's got his little chair on the chair so he can see over the heads in front, and no one's there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't notice he was in a chair. Yeah, and he's got his feet like on the cooler. I saw yeah. that. His backpack is there. They are ready for the day right now. That any, is awesome. And any weather. I love that. And I love the that title, is- too. I love the title, Negative Space Ducks. Yeah, that is amazing. This is one of the images that I uh, that I wanted to do a little bit of tweaking on. Um, oh, cool. Because I feel compositionally w- we, can, we can improve this. It really doesn't need much, but just a little bit ever so slightly. And so this is the before, and this is the after. Oh, bring them up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a it's just a tiniest little crop. So basically, um, I'm going to bring them down so they're they're closer on thirds, and then the handrail I feel is splitting the image too much. So that to me that's like a little secondary third. So I'm bringing them over, and you can see the lower right hand quadrant of that crop. That's the lower third. They're in the top left third. And I feel that that just sort of finishes the image off <clears throat> quite a bit better. And then what I did uh, is I just put a radial gradient around them. And I dropped the outside exposure just a, just a little bit. Not, not, not too much. Not too just much. To draw just to us up there. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit because it really draws our eye there. So, You know, I was see. looking at the shot, the original shot, and I was wondering – were there people there and and Craig took them out just to you know to for impact because it, it works if they were but I'm curious were there actually people there and I want to know the story of this you know <laughs> I really want right, to, right. I want to know why these people are there <laughs> and that adds to the <laughs> tension of the image too it's like okay why are you there right and what's so important what's is this a sporting event is this a concert you know what's, what's happening here what's so important that you got to get be prepared like that i know and you know what i just i think that this would be such a great ad for the stadium or for the sport team or whatever you know like these are these are the diehard fans are like are you this dedicated <laughs> you know i don't know i think that from an advertising perspective that might have the negative effect because <laughs> oh. it's like <laughs> no one comes to our venue <laughs> except for these people <laughs> okay well there is there okay there is that you gotta look at that yeah yeah or you know what i would have titled this early bird done boom (laughs) early bird (laughs) yeah there you go there you go i i do love that uh you know michael was very intentional on keeping the lines horizontal um i think we have a little bit of perspective shift across the top we can see that those lines vary a little bit from the left to the right they're not perfectly level but they're pretty solid at the bottom yeah um but for the most part i i mean you know just a little crop on this it's solid i love it yeah this is a solid shot i like it i like it a lot good job michael all right so let's pop out of there. And who do we have next? Lamb is up next. All right. Let's bring Lamb shot up. Oh, look at that. Yeah, he had the, the extreme negative space on top. Look at that. Yeah. I, and I, I love how that just makes me feel like this building is super tall. Mm-hmm. Even though I can't see the building of the ground, that, that additional use of negative space makes me feel like that thing is way up there in the air. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a lot of weight pushing down on it. And, you know, yes. yeah, there could even be, be a couple stars up there at the top <laughs> to yes. indicate how high it is. Yeah. You could definitely throw some little speckles in there that could be some stars, which mm-hmm. would be really nice because it just adds a little bit of, again, texture to the, <clears throat> you know, to that negative space. A little traction in there. Yeah. Just so they. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, very good. I though. love it. Yeah, Lamb's gonna have to do a like put a portfolio online somewhere for us to look through because his his shots are a very unique perspective uh, and probably a, a an unseen perspective of Malaysia to a lot of us. So I'd I'd love to see a, a body of work together with all of this stuff in one spot. Right, exactly. Because so much of it is is foreign. You know, just just the, the 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 signs or the nature of the signs or the structures around it. Um, we're just it's we only, just don't it's only see foreign that. to people that don't live in Malaysia. So. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, makes sense, right? Yeah. No, for sure, for sure. I was talking to someone today about uh, when I first got to Japan when I was stationed there, and 
you know, I was, this is when I was an airman in the dorms and I asked my roommate, I was like, Hey, we're in Japan. Let's go get some Japanese food. And he's like, they don't really call it Japanese food here, dude. <laughs> it's just food. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I was like, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to go to France and ask for French fries since they don't even have those there. <laughs> so, right, right. Oh, I love it. Cool. Lamb, thank you, sir, for that shot. Yeah. I love the negative space. That is brilliant. All that black and there. It's really strong. I, I haven't seen a lot of that, like architectural or landscape type shots that use that negative space like that. So that's, that's really clever. Right. It's not used enough. It, it definitely could be used more. Right. No, yeah, absolutely. All right. Last but not least, there's a little birdie here. And a little birdie told me that uh, you might be doing some work on the little birdie. <laughs> Just a little bit. Not, not Karen a lot. Karen Sweeney. Yeah. Karen, Karen Sweeney's. Well, look at that bird. Come on. That bird yeah. is just, he got all dressed up. You know, he's, he's ready to go. I love this bird. Yeah. So this is this is one of those images that uh, I, I mean, I love the composition. I love the colors that are going on there. I feel like it's a little flat and, you know, there's a lot we can do. Usually out of camera, our images aren't finished. I think we can we can definitely finish them. So what I what I did with this one is I simply put a uh, radio gradient around it. So let me pick that gradient. Let me get in there. So this is in this is in capture one. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around the bird's face, soften the edges of that just a little bit. You can see <clears throat> that's where the mask is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the outside down just until I get the balance that I like. Mm -hmm. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to background and I'll use brightness and I'll bring the whole image back up. Maybe mm -hmm. increase the contrast a little bit. There we go. And you can even, you can notice like in the curves in the lower right hand corner, you can see how there's not a lot of data in the highlights. Yep. So what we can do is we can actually we can actually start to clip that and bring up the highlights right to the point of, you know, clipping those highlights in the feathers. So this one I already did. I'll reset that. So that's our before. And that's our after. Nice. We didn't we didn't change the composition at all. We nope. didn't change, you know, the cropping. We didn't do any sharpening. Uh, we really didn't even I don't even think I bumped saturation. Um, it's simply just a little bit of, you know, highlight and shadow control. And, and the, the goal of the highlight and shadow control is to draw the viewer into the face or the subject of the photo, right? Right, right. Yep. exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and it's an, interesting, it's an interesting test. If we flip this image upside down, where does your eye go to immediately? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right to the face of the bird. So even if it's upside down, it's working. Our brain says, oh, I'm going to look there. Oh, uh, oh, look, I see the face again. Oh, look, I found the face again. Yep. Yep. And we always look at the, the brightest areas or the areas of most contrast as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. So that, that's just a simple tweak on that. It's just a little bit of dodging and burning and um, bringing the highlight control and the shadow control to where we want it to best represent the image. Very good. Very huh. good. Good thank shot. You. And Karen, thank you for submitting that one. Very yes. Nice. All right. Good. That is the that's the last shot. Uh, I think we both have a favorite because we talked about it before. We cheated. We did. And we have to because there's so many. I'm I'm looking I'm looking over here. Um I, I like Laura's a lot. Yeah. With the sure. with the dinghy out there. I really this love that one. a lot. That one right there. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go and agree with you. I'm on the fence. I don't know. Pull up your your version of it, too, because I want to see your version. I wonder yeah. which one I would like better. That oh, one, yeah. That one or. This <laughs> one. Huh. Interesting. A little, bit of, little bit of cloud, a little bit of not cloud. It's definitely my favorite with a little bit of cloud. I think we got to put it to the community. <laughs> the community must let us know which do which do you like better you like it better just with a flat white background or or you know overcast or do you need some cloud cloud texture in there which one makes the image better right i'm on the fence i think i don't know Troy. i think i think i like it simple like that 
for some reason. And maybe even black and white. I don't know. I like it. I like this image. <laughs> and the fact that we're discussing it yeah. like this is it's it's a, winner. a winner. It's a winner. Yeah. This is our negative space winner. Front page of TWIP. This is it. Yep. Very nice. Cool. All right. So I'm going to put us back on screen now. So now the only thing left to do for this critique session is what? Pick the topic for next week. Pick um, the topic. You last week, Blake Rudis picked it. This week, I'm letting you pick it. What What is your uh, what do you think? Well, I think I think that we should work along this sort of uh, negative space concept and go with minimalism. Minimalism. Yes. Minimalism. You speak in yep. my language right there. Yep. We call it the, the Ikea of photography. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, right. I shouldn't say that because Joshua was going to come up with a with a shot of an Ikea chair or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it, it, it's about getting back to, to the really, really simple elements that make an image great, that make it amazing. And what really sort of feeds our brain, you know, what we're hungry on for those images. And I think that less is more. Mm -hmm. You know, and it goes along with the negative space kind of topic. So I think, you know, playing along that line, sticking with minimalism. Yep. Minimalism is the topic for next week. Bring it, group. group. I want to see what you got. Or, or bring as little as you possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right, Less man. More. So that was good. Thank you for doing that. These these critiques are getting better and better. And I think that the addition of the of the the live editing and tweaks the uh, i'm getting a lot out of them i hope the members are as well so thank you for doing maybe that. that maybe next time i'll show how to put a border and mount and mount an image oh god oh, you're gonna continue, <laughs> continue to corrupt people pretty soon hey. I, everything's gonna be black and white with borders and all <laughs> hey i simply present it you can choose to love it or hate it it's it's fine you know you, i love black and white here's how you do it if you don't want to make black and white that's fine you don't have to do it that's true but you you're may, you may find a use for it. You may find a use for it, and you're not actually forcing anybody to make the change, right? So, no, no. But, but I think I think the point, all co joking aside, is to if it makes sense to do that for the image, use use key lines and borders and the color or lack thereof of color right. as tools and composition, or adding tools. clouds or taking or adding, out elements. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, use them as tools to tell the story of the image. Look at the image and say, what's the story? What am I trying to get at? And where's the hero? And how can I make yep. that, you know, present that its best? And these are the tools that you have in your Batman utility belt. How can you use those to, to do the right thing? So. Right, right, right. Cool. All right, man. Well, that's it for critique number 102. I guess I'll uh, I'll see you here next week. Same bat time, same bat place. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All right, man. See you later. All right, man. Take care. This is Twitter.